Smell It Sunday, it is Sunday, that means it is Smell It Sunday. Welcome everyone for tuning in. Welcome, thank you for everyone for tuning in is what I wanted to say. How are we all doing today folks? Let's wait a little bit for some people to stroll in. Just in case you don't know and you're new to this, this channel, Smell It Sunday is a live show where we, I don't know, we talk about candles, we talk about uh, what's going on in the candle industry? So we share some stories. We get together as friends and we strengthen our communication. And we we try not to screw up as much as I usually screw up during lives. I have a tendency, see, I can't even turn the music off. That tells you how little control I have over what I'm doing. First things first, I always want to adjust that camera. It's still a little crooked. All right, so now folks, there's gonna be a lot of you that are tuning in after this live stream, right? And you're gonna to wanna to see the results. We are going to light a 35 year old Yankee candle today, but you're gonna see that this video might be like an hour long. So don't, don't feel like, oh man, I gotta watch this whole thing. If you wanna see the results immediately, you can just skip right through all the way to the end. Or if you want to hang out and chill with us and uh, share some items that I've recently purchased. I recently just got back from the, the Yankee Candle Village and uh, Yankee Candle Village and Kringle Candle. Almost forgot to say what it was for a second. And uh, we can we can hang out. Now, here's the thing. I've had little time to prepare for this lighting. And I want to make sure that I'm saying hello to everybody who is joining us. Yeah, a little bit of a rush today. I don't know if you can tell in the tone of my voice. I wanted to be right on schedule and I was running a couple minutes behind. Let's update the channel here so I can pull up the video so I can read your comments. And if you're sitting there, you're lurking. Good afternoon, Eric. How we doing? If you're if you're lurking, if you if you tune into these lives and you don't you don't you don't you don't chat, please speak up. We want to hear from you. All right, all right. So I, now I can see myself, and now I can see your comments. So we have, we got we got lots of folks. I would call you out individually, but we have a room filled of people. What am I gonna like today? That is the big question. Very simple headline to this video, lighting a 35 year old Yankee candle, more or less. Could it be 34 years old? Absolutely. Could it be 36? Yeah, maybe. So um, there's a little bit of guesstimation there. And I do not think I've shared with you this candle yet. I'm kind of excited. It's in rough shape. It's in rough shape. It has been lit. It looks like it's been sitting in someone's garage for, well, quite literally decades, probably. Gabe's got a 40 year old candle. Got to, you gotta share pictures of that with us. Uh, Gabe, go to the Candle Enthusiast fan group on Facebook. This is a great way for me to segue into having you do that. Share all of your photos, share your collection. Make sure that there's other Yankee Candle fanatics that are getting to see these items. 40 years old, that, that's pretty old. That's pretty old, that's, that's, that's long before South Deerfield days. Hello from Germany. We got someone from Berlin joining in today. How how we doing? It's getting serious. I'm rolling up the sleeves. It's all good in the woods. Um, I think I'm set. I think I'm, I got all of the tools. It's going to take a lot of work because here here it is. Now, if you don't already know, um, some of the very early the very early, the most early uh, apothecary jars released by Yankee Candle were um, released in these country kitchen uh, candles. They were called country kitchen. And, um, and now that I'm looking at this, you can see what I mean uh, about this, this kind of 
it looks like dust, sawdust, really laying in someone's garage. Even the bottom has been torn off. But here's the thing. Uh, it does. It did come with the original sticker here. So this is how I could really identify the age. Um, this is a country heather, country heather candle. And listen to this. You hear that? You know what that sound is. This has been exposed to some uh, unfortunate temperature at some point and has separated from the glass. But that's going to fix itself once we have this lit a um, lot of markings uh, going on here too can you see all the the stuff has got stuck in there and um, I don't know I don't even know what it is I mean I want to say sawdust but it started to tunnel we're gonna fix that uh, uh, that that's gonna be not not a problem at all we even have a little piece of a wick stuck in there get that out yeah we don't want that uh, I do have a brand new one I want to show you what a brand new one would look like here we go here we go so I showed you uh, some folks on a live on my second channel uh, last evening this is what one would look like brand new again that sticker the fragrance is gonna be right there on top of the apothecary jar. This one's maple walnut and it smells absolutely wonderful. But let's get down to this. I have no idea. So Heather, Heather is a, what is it? It's a, it's a, 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 a flowering bush. I, you know, I've, um, I've never, never really picked Heather before I can't even say I've actually smelled Heather before I know Heather based on it's like liter literary uh, symbols I, uh, I was just reading before like how uh, purple Heather represents and this is purple uh, good fortune and uh, beauty and, and all those good things the smell of this isn't I can't believe I didn't even talk about the smell already the smell of this is insane it really does smell like it was poured yesterday that is what's truly insane about this whole thing because very intense but uh it's it's a strong blossom smell it's not a heavy tropical floral smell i feel like i've been saying this all the time but it's not it's not something that's going to kill your sinuses now if you're not into florals at all like if you can't even stand lilac then maybe this is something you're gonna want to you know stay away from but um let's try to light this pre-black band candle i do have a piece of foil somewhere all right here we go now usually i said this last time i use something called cinefoil it's a very thick matte black uh, aluminum foil that's going to hold in the heat better uh, but I don't have any. I actually have none left. I got to order more. It's uh, used in film and television all the time. It's what they use to wrap around like studio lights to like direct the light where they want it to go. All right. And I'm going to do what I did last time. I'm going to take this huge hurricane and put it right there. And we're going to light it, and I'm going to put it right there so it's in sight the entire time. I mean, I don't think you guys would imagine that I'm doing like a, a, a magic trick, like I'm going to switch it out with something, but this way I can at least smell it, and you know where it is at all times. All right, so this is, this is where it's exciting. All of the preparation... All of the excitement goes into this moment. Are we ready? I want, to see, I want to see people say, come on, I'm ready. Should I clean? I'm going to clean it out. You're right. You should definitely clean it out. 
uh, some damp water would be nice if I had it because what's going to end up happening is all of that's going to sink into the wax. See, I'm just too anxious to light it. Or I'm, I'm anxious to light it. So I'm, I'm, I'm moving too fast and not thinking. That's really loose. Do you hear that? There's a good amount of space in there, which is good because the wick is very short. So we're gonna need that extra space for that wax to sink into that crevasse, that little, that space between the glass and the wax. So our wax, or so our wick doesn't completely get drowned. I actually did the trick pretty nicely. Get some of the, the black schmutz off. Looks good to me. Are we ready now? This is harder than it looks, because I'm looking at myself trying to light this. Here we go. 35 years. I mean, and maybe it was lit last year, who knows, but 35 years. My hand is shaking. It's lit. It's lit. Let it shine, baby. Let it shine. I'm excited. I'm excited. Country Heather. Uh, I've had this candle sitting around for a little bit. I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with it. Was I going to make a video on it? Was I going to like really research what Heather is and then do a video on like the symbolism of Heather? I'm like, no, I'm just going to light this candle and fix it. It's in terrible shape. So I'm going to let this sit here. I've created an uneven surface for optimal safety. And then I'm gonna do what I did last time. Or maybe not. I was gonna wrap like a scarf around this. But I have some extra tools to expedite the process in a little bit. Yeah. I, I have it down here. I wonder if you guys, some of you guys might know what I'm talking about. But let's see what you guys are saying. I gotta drink some coffee. All right. Okay, light it up. It's lit, drum roll, says Jackie Brown, go for it. And you guys are really into this, I'm glad. This is exactly what I wanna do right now. Let it glow, let it glow. Uh, Eric says, I use my lamp for that sort of thing. I don't have a candle lamp. I'm not kidding. There's no reason behind that. That's not like I'm saying anything bad behind a candle lamp. It's creating a shadow. Um, I don't have one. Uh, I would love to do some experimental work with, with these lamps. How does do, do you folks have lamps? Do you use them? Do you prefer them? Do you use them only in certain circumstances? I'm I'm all about the flame. Like I've never even got into like tarts or anything like that or the melt cups. Uh, it's just the furthest thing from my mind. Now that I have Elsa the puppy, I guess I should be concerned about you know flames getting knocked over. But uh, I keep her away from the candles. Heat gun and candle lamp. Heat gun. Heat gun like a creme brulee heat gun. Psh, like one of those. Yeah, I like those. I gotta get a new one of those. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Don't have a lamp. If anyone doesn't know what we're talking about, uh, a candle lamp... Help me out, folks, because I really don't know. I mean, from what I've seen, it's like you would take a Yankee candle, right? And you'd pop this underneath, like, it looks like a desk lamp, or it could it could be a, you know, a fancy design. There's quite, quite a few numerous designs I've seen. And I'm guessing the heat from the bulb, the electricity, the higher the wattage, the more heat is going to be transferred from that bulb to the wax. Uh, melting the wax without having to actually light 
the wick. My question, my, my concern about that is, does that extreme heat um, hurt that fragrance oil as it's trying to go upwards, right? CO2, right? It's gonna, it's gonna go fly straight upwards and it's gonna hit the surface of that bulb. So for me, it always sounded kind of dangerous for one. And then two, I'm worrying about the fragrance oil, the very delicate fragrance oil getting too hot. And if it gets too hot, it won't have a chance to fill your space. But again, I've never used one, so I don't know. Uh, Nicole just used tinfoil, yeah. Okay, Gabe, same with the Hollyberry candle. It's 40 years old. Um, we gotta see this, we gotta see this candle, Hollyberry. That is one that was produced back in those early days. I would love to see it. Photographs, uh, if you don't know, Gabe, I'm kind of a self-proclaimed... Uh, Yankee Candle. I don't want to say historian because I don't really do much work. I just, I'd like to know uh, about the history of Yankee Candle. I think a lot of you folks like to know about the history of Yankee Candle. And there's no real source of documentation of what's, what, what's going on. You know, if we look at, you know, from year to year to year, uh, the progression, the history of it all. I would love to see what the jar looks like. And uh, if it is from the Holy Oak days, Holy Oak again, meaning it would be prior to South Deerfield. I would love to see how it's labeled. Oh, are we talking about a shade? Oh, all right, so I'm thinking you're talking about Lamps. Some of you guys are talking about shades. We could talk about Aluma lids. Speaking of Aluma lid, I should pop one of those on there, shouldn't I? Get an Aluma lid on there. That will, if we don't know, the reason why I have this flat one is uh, I find that it works the best because it's the metal is closest to the wax. It's just going to keep uh, the heat. Uh, on top of the wax. Again, making it pull out even faster. Okay. Da, da, da. Da, 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 da. Uh, Nancy, mine is always 25 watt bulbs. 25 watts? See, I thought it would be a lot more. And would that, what kind of bulb would that be, Eric? Um, 25 watt? That doesn't really seem that hot. I've never seen the flat lids. Yeah, whenever I find them, I try to get a few. I just saw the same exact one during the semi-annual sale a couple months ago, and I really should have gotten more, but this was the very first, I'm not kidding, this first Illumilid I ever purchased. And it's exclusively really the only one I use. Um... So, if you don't know, I just got back from South Deerfield yesterday, the flagship store in, um, in Massachusetts. And uh, I had a chance to film, uh, not necessarily just evaluations, but get up close and personal with the camera of all the new items. Get nice close-ups. So this way you could see what they look like in the catalog sometimes. They make them uh, look, you know, a little extra pretty. This, this way you can get a serious idea of what they look like up close, just in case you can't get to uh, a storefront and you want to order online. Uh, but also you can, you know, chime, uh, um, you can hear me chime in, give my, um, my opinion on some of the new products. The, the watercolor collection, which is like these perfect pillars that are really, really pretty to look at. We've seen the, the three wick tumblers. The love candle is in stock. It's sold out everywhere. The love candle, remember that love candle for Valentine's day? They had a whole stand, a whole table full at South Deerfield. So if you missed out on that love candle, make sure you call them up 
say, hey, look, I heard you have the love candle. Can you send it to me? Uh, good chances they will. Uh, but I would do it fast because I would, I would imagine there's about 25 of them there. And uh, with this weekend coming up, uh, that's usually when things disappear. During the week, things are pretty quiet. During the weekends, that's when they get all the, the bus tours and stuff. Um, I also went to Kringle Candle. Okay, so the candle lamps have halogen bulbs. Or are you, as Carol's asking if they have halogen bulbs. Okay. Uh, I went to to Kringle Candle, and some of you are probably going to be a little bummed out because I said I was, I was going to do a live video from Kringle Candle, but good news. Instead of doing a live, I actually uh, had a chance to chat uh, with a few folks. There's a few connections I've made with Kringle uh, over the past couple of years, and uh, I happened to bump into one of them yesterday. And I said, is there any way, I, I said this a long time ago to you, but this was like when, you know, I had like a hundred and some subscribers, but now that we have a, a larger following, I, I asked her like, is there a way I could come in with my camera, not sneak around, right? Not like walk around with the camera, trying not to get in trouble, but actually bring it in, have full permission, not worry about, you know, disturbing any of the, the customer's experience. And, we're definitely going to work something out. So that is great. Um, it's just a matter of uh, logistics. How, when, is the store going to be open? Is it not going to be open? Things of that nature. So that's great news because if you don't know, Kringle is big. The Kringle Candle facility um, has got several rooms all its own. But then there's the country barn, and then there's a chocolate shop, and then there's the farm table, the restaurant. There's a lot of stuff going on at the Kringle campus. So it's not like a, a two-hour operation to document this whole place. It takes quite, quite a bit of time. Also, they do tastings. I was talking to a gentleman there uh, yesterday who's hosting... Uh, vinegar um, and olive oil tastings, which is it's interesting. You know, it's like they they're constantly engaging the senses at Kringle. So you have to give it, you have to give them huge credit um, for, for 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 doing what they do. But also being that they're five ten minutes away from the Yankee Candle Village, um, that's that that's that's a that's a that's big competition to stand up towards. And I highly recommend if you visit the Yankee Candle Village that you do reserve time to go to Kringle Candle and tell them I sent you. Da, 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 da. But I did pick up a few things, and I did learn a few things about country candles that I didn't know already. I, have a, da, da, da. I just want to make sure I'm reading all your comments here. Nancy, thank you for the reminder of the thumbs up. I really would appreciate that. It, uh, believe it or not, it does help out a lot getting those thumbs up. So Kringle Candle, have you noticed Kringle Candle um, gray? You know, gray is one of their most popular fragrances, right? But they released it in the country candle as well. So it's in the Kringle jar and then it's in the country candle jar. Which one do you buy? Are they the same? Are they different? One's colored wax, one's not. One's got two wicks, one has one. Well, no, the large one, I suppose, is different. But um, something that is interesting, and it never even dawned on me, since Country Candle, their, their uh, subsidiary company, their colored wax, they can use more fragrance oil. This blew my mind when I heard about this. Of course, because every Kringle candle is white. Um, and say, for example, uh, chocolate fragrance oil or coffee fragrance oil uh, or like something that's like a nutty uh, 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 aroma may have a dark um, oil or wood notes could have a dark color as well. And they have to be very careful about how they blend that white paraffin with the fragrance oil with Kringle because they want that bright white wax. That is why when you find a chocolate candle by Kringle, 
Um, one of my favorites is, uh, I have it right there, I can't even read it. It's their like spiced hot cocoa. It, it's almost like an amber color. Uh, it changes over time. And, um, and that really has a lot to do with the oil now that, you know, come to think of it. But with the, with the country candles, they have so much more freedom to use a whole bunch of different fragrance oils that they weren't using the time before. So, is that gray candle from Kringle Candle any different from the country candle gray candle? I don't know, but it allows them to use more oil if they so choose. I smelled them both cold, they smelled the same. However, or not however, also, a lot of fragrances have been being retired at Kringle. A lot of things are going away, like coffee crema. You guys know how I feel about coffee, and you know how I feel about that, that candle. It disappeared like a year ago. And I'm like, what is going on? Uh, all of these great fragrances being pulled off the shelves. And they have a room where they sell them for like half off, which is awesome. However, I was just wondering why, why, are they, why are they taking them off the shelves? Because they're turning them into country candles and just giving them different names. Now, it depends on who you ask. They might tell you they're not doing this. But if you smell coffee crema, Kringle, and you smell a coffee shop, country candle, it's the same candle, right? It's the same candle. So if you've noticed that a Kringle candle, a favorite of yours, has disappeared, just shop country candle. See, I bet you, I bet you it's just in the other line. Da, 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 da. Um, when did Kringle start? Kringle opened in 2010. Um, uh, by Mike, or Mick, as uh, I guess he, he goes by, um, uh, M Michael Kittrich III, uh, senior uh, Mike Kittrich, I guess the second, his father started uh, Yankee Candle back in the early 70s. And right out of college, uh, Mike Kittrich III uh, didn't really waste any time. 2010, Kringle was launched. They had the property, they started selling the candles, and really... If you think about it, 2010, that's not that long ago, considering how well known this company is now and considering the distribution of this candle company and the reputation of this candle company. And they're not inexpensive candles. I mean, we're talking about borderline luxury candles. You're never gonna find like a buy one, get one free Kringle candle sale. That's just not the way it works. Uh, country, uh, country candle, do, they don't do Halloween, but I would imagine if they ever do bring back Halloween, um, I, I know, I just know it's going to be in the country candle, Nicole. So if like they ever did bring back Witch's Cauldron or if they did, you know, reformulate like their own version of Witch's Brew, um from back in the day because if you look at the country candles it does say the original recipe it says that right there in the jar um if they do bring the halloween candles back i think it's going to be in the country candle line i hope they do because that that would be exciting i just hope that they're they're not the same lineup you know we we, we got the candy corn we got it we got it right we got like the witch's brew. Let, let's 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 start imagining some new fun nostalgic scents. Uh, I have some Kringle candles with me. Uh, let me see if I can. Where did I put? Oh, there they are. I bought a, I, I bought a bunch of daylights. Um, I had some gifts to get. Plus, there's some that I've. Never burned. Plus, I bought several that I would love to do comparisons with Yankee with Yankee Candle. Can't. How do you? There it goes. Scarlet Rose. Beauty and the Beast. Why did I? Why did they not take advantage of this scent? when they re-released, not re-released, but when they released the live action Beauty and the Beast film. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about, marketing, right? They should have had like a, 
a huge email sent out promoting that candle at that time. Um, so here's something that's really kind of what I'm talking about as far as Kringle reinventing old Yankee candles. This is one of uh, my all-time favorite autumn Yankee candles. Can you read that? Um, Moonlight Harvest. I reviewed this long time ago. Uh, Industrial Wasteland. Chris, if you're with us, I know he's a huge fan of this. And um, it's just this huge baking spice, autumn goodness explosion. But it is very powerful in the clove and in the allspice, which really separates it from a lot of the other, let's say, like Harvest or Spice Pumpkin uh, uh, Yankee Candle Autumn Classics. However, why am I putting it back? I brought it out to show you something. We have Moonlight Harvest by Yankee Candle. Take a good look at that, that logo there. Kringle Candle or Country Candle. Harvest Moon. Harvest Moon. You see what's going on here? Um, they, they're, they're kind of, re, like I said, they're reinventing uh, some of the late greats in the country candle form. Now, do they smell exactly the same? No, they don't. Especially not this one. That is wonderful. Oh, my God. That's the thing, though. The... The, 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 the country candles still come in the white, the white wax in the daylight form. That is, a, that is, that is really well balanced. I don't even think I smelled that yesterday. I just picked it up and threw it in this container. Um, but it does play by the same rules as the Moonlight Harvest. I'm sure there would be some troubles if they were recreating the same fragrances with almost nearly the same names and the same logos. I'm sure uh, the companies would not... Uh, there would be problems in Candleland if that were to occur. What else do we have here? Mike Kittredge, uh just announced that they he's going to release a brand new fragrance. Help me out, guys, if, if I can't remember the name. It's called... Is it simply just called... Vin it's not called Vineyard. It's, it's, it's something... It's, it's two words, two nouns. Or maybe it's an adjective and a noun. There's a new wine-themed candle, but it's got the word Vineyard in it. And... Something that's really important to me is always trying to find a candle that auth authentically smells like wine. And I've never found one that has been able to pull this off. So Country Candle has two that they release. I think it's Country Candle. Oh, and I didn't buy it. Gotta be kidding me. I should actually think it was Kringle. Kringle's got a Pinot Noir candle. Uh, it smells like red fruit. It smells like cherries. It smells like a lot of things I would describe, or a lot of things I would say, if I were smelling a really nice glass of Pinot Noir. But it doesn't actually smell like Pinot Noir. Missed opportunity for me. Smelled delicious. Delicious, delicious. You burn that while you're having a glass of Pinot Noir, Excellent. But here's one called Cheers, and on the glass, on the glass, on the label, um, we see two, uh, two glasses of sparkling wine. And uh, I hope, you know, it's like maybe, maybe this could smell like authentic, not necessarily champagne. Champagne can really range in its uh, aroma and flavor profile. Some champagnes can be biscuity, they can have this kind of lemon custard smell to it, or some are just light, crisp, refreshing, very bright citrus. Um, Sonoma sparkling wine I really love from out of California, because instead of uh, being overly citrus, they can actually smell like peaches and nectarines. It's amazing. It's because of the rolling hills in the Russian River Valley, uh, in Sonoma Valley, that uh, allows them to take on that flavor profile because of uh, the sun exposure throughout the, the season. <sighs> mm. 
Very, very lemon. Very lemon. Very lemon. Delicious. But, you know, it doesn't have that... There's not, this would not be a champagne. This is not robust. This is not biscuity. This is not buttery. This, this has no sign of any kind of uh, wood note or oakiness, which is okay. It just smells like big time clean lemon and refreshing lemon. So like imagine you took Sicilian lemon and all is bright, put them together. It really is pretty, though. I don't find there to be a quality difference between Kringle and Country Candle. I really don't, and I mean that with all my heart. Um, like, I thought Country Candle would be, like, the more affordable, you know, non-luxury candle line that they would put on sale more often. I find the Country Candles to be of the same quality. Um, sage and citrus. Um, we know that one from Yankee Candle. Well, this one's citrus and sage. Uh, I don't actually have it, uh, currently, uh, with me. I actually don't have it at all. I have to buy a new one. But I would love to do a side-by-side -side of, uh, citrus and sage and sage and citrus. But smelling it right off the bat, yeah, uh... I mean, for me, this is incredibly authentic herbaceousness, herbal notes, not just sage. And there's a um, base note of, you know, call it sandalwood, call, call whatever you would, but there is a, a really nice wood component to this that makes this kind of feel like, when I smell this, I want to put this in my log cabin living room. I don't own a log cabin. If I had a log cabin, this is where I would want to put it because it makes the it would make the room smell clean. It would make the room because of that lemon, but it also would enhance that lodge, that wood experience, and that herbal note. Woo! Very cool. Let's see how our candle is doing. Da, 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 da. Also, since the re-release of uh, Campfire Treats, I picked up uh, Smoke and S'mores by Country Candle. So we can do a little comparison. Not that Campfire Treats smells anything like chocolate, but I thought it would be fun to have them in the same video. All right, what do we got going on here? It's done nothing. It's done absolutely nothing so far can we take a look so we we do have the technology to do this today i can i can bring the camera down so there it is so it's doing nothing so we're gonna let that go for just a little bit longer and then i'm gonna expedite the process like I said, I have a very quick way of fixing the problem. Da, 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 da. So you guys, but I won't be back until April. Taking a break from Facebook, Laura C. says. Taking a break from Facebook? I hope that is hope everything's okay. I could take a, a, a break from Facebook every once in a while. Gabe says, I'm going to get more people to try this channel and help Shane support the candle enthusiast. Gabe, I appreciate that. Yes, that's um, one of the things I always, always hope that can happen is that you guys spread the love, spread the word, and uh, we can grow together. Like I said, before when I wanted to go to Kringle Candle and film, no, it wasn't going to happen. But see, now that the audience has grown just a little bit, and if you type in 
like Kringle Candle or Yankee Candle in my Google search, my face starts popping up and stuff like that. It gives us more credibility as a whole. So people know that we're not just, you know, this this little, little tiny group of people. So getting yeses to film inside of an establishment is becoming easier and easier, which is what I've always, you know, from day one is what I was hoping for. Uh, Lori says she's very happy. She's a little self-discipline. Uh, good for you. Good for you. Honestly, Facebook, you know, it's, it's, it, it really can. Not just Facebook, but let's talk about social media. It can really, uh, eat up a lot of your life. I mean, it, it does, it does consume a large part of, uh, of your life. And, and God, you know, forbid if you... Um, you know, own a business. I don't own a business, but if someone owns a business or, you know, say someone's an actor or a filmmaker or something like that, they have to do all of that too. So not only do they have their own like profiles, but then they're out there trying to promote themselves and trying to sell their projects. So social media is, um, it's it, it, it takes up time. It takes up time. Gabe is gone from one to eight. He has eight forty-year-old Yankee candles. We have to, we have to get down to the bottom of this, because this is getting insane, Gabe. Um. Uh, Nicole says I run the Facebook page for work and I hate it. Yeah, so I can imagine, I can imagine um, how much diligence. And especially, you know, a lot of people writing messages. I, I know people when they write messages, when you're working for a company, that the messages always might not be super nice. So that can be challenging. Uh, is Kringle Candle Christmas a good scent? I've heard it's better than Christmas tree. Honestly, I can't pick favorites do that kind of thing but absolutely uh, uh, the, the the kringle kringle candle christmas and then there's there's kringle and then there's christmas tree they're they're all good i mean i've never smelled a kringle candle and said well this is just not successful as an aromatic experience it's just really more a matter of what you prefer which direction you want to lean towards when it comes to christmas obviously the the big players are always the baking spices um, the whole arrangements of different kinds of woods, uh, resins, coniferous trees. Do you like that word, coniferous trees? Is it a spruce? Is it a pine? Is it a fir? Is it a hemlock? Is it, uh, if it's a pine tree, is it a pine cone? You know, is it a juniper berry? Is it the sap? You know, there's so many different directions uh, you can take Christmas candles, but usually it comes down to the tree, the hearth, the baked goods, and the baking spices. Um, I really don't have a favorite. I do have a favorite Kringle candle, Christmas candle, and I can't even think of the name of it. Is it Snow Angel? It's like a gingerbread snow angel, right? I think he's just spread out like that on, on, on the label, just spread out like that. I don't think they make it anymore. And it was so good. I had a little daylight, a little daylight. And it filled my entire apartment. It's a little daylight. And I remember I went to Crinkle Candle um, maybe a year ago, and I saw that they had pulled it from production. Angie's in the house. How we doing, Angie? Um, Eric, yeah, thanks for chiming in. Crinkle... Kringle Christmas. I can't even, th I can't even like separate it because there's so many of them, the Kringle Candles. I don't know Kringle Candles as well as I do Yankee Candles. Like my, my, my memory bank of aroma. Ginger Snow Angel. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Uh, that one. That one is one you should try to find. Um, go try to find out because that is like a molasses, uh, molasses, um, I'm trying to think of a, a collection of words that could serve 
uh, how much I truly appreciate that. But it is like a gingerbread cookie, and it's just uh, super sweet, super baking spice forward. And, you know, to me, that's my style of Christmas candle. That, and I do like, like the Alpine. Like outdoorsy, spruce, cold, cooling sensation pine trees. I'm surprised you guys are not asking about Halloween candles because, you know, the time is ticking. Which means I, you guys are going to start asking about Halloween candles around June. Which means I have to start doing my research, my work, my uh, investigative research, if you, if you want to call it that. And start hunting down some information on what's happening for Halloween. Like that... That's a thing now. Like I gotta, I gotta like start working on that. Last year I got a really big head start and it worked out really well. But if I didn't have that head start, I never would have made it. And I was so burned out by the end of Halloween that I had like for Christmas to, to go back and do all of the Christmas Yankee candles. I mean, it was a pleasure, but man, was I just tired. I was just tired from driving from place to place, calling, emailing. Okay, all right. Wow, there's, there's just so many comments. I'm not, I'm not used to this. Simple, super simple arts and crafts. Snowman, 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 says Monica. How you doing, Monica? Um, let me go back. Go back a little bit here. Um... Somebody said, do I have a favorite Kringle? Oh, man. I think it was Carol, too, who said it. Where is it? Yeah, wasn't there a pepper one, peppermint one that you liked, too? What's happening? Super Chat. $20. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Who is this coming? Is this coming from? It is. I X. I don't know if you want to call call. I don't know if you want me to call you Nine Moochie or Mooch or I X Mooch. Thank you so much. I mean that. I really mean it. I'm doing the best I can to try to keep this channel afloat, trying to make it like this functioning machine so that we can continue to grow and not like crash and burn and uh, you know all of those, you know. To see that uh, uh, my, my work is being noticed, it, it really does mean uh, a lot to me, and I cannot express that enough. Thank you so much. So a huge shout out to, I, I'm going to call you Nine Mooch. Nine Mooch uh, and uh, your family, um, thank you so much for supporting me. I really appreciate that. Really appreciate that. Uh, the Peppermint. The peppermint cocoa, I think that's what it was called, peppermint cocoa, whoever was asking about that one was great. That was one that turned um, like a really awkward yellow color. So they had to clear their stock of it. And guess what I did? I bought them. <laughs> uh, I, I, I bought a bunch of them because I really liked it. And I reviewed it. It's a very sad review. If, you're, if you've ever seen it, I've reviewed it over a year ago. I was snowed in in a cabin. And it just looks so sad because I'm just sitting in this cabin like by myself. It's like me and Santa Claus. And I'm like talking about candles. And I literally, I couldn't even open the front door because the snow drift. I mean, it was, it was that bad. So um, check that review out if you need a good laugh. Um, Monica says, what's new? You know... Uh, I just got back from a couple days in Massachusetts. Always good to be out there. I experienced some, you know, some nasty weather, but spent a good day at Yankee Candle. Uh, spent a, a good portion of yesterday at Kringle Candle and uh, bought some goodies. I love the jack-o'-lantern video. The jack-o'-lantern video. The jack-o'-lantern video. Like when it's the jack-o'-lantern was talking on the screen. Is that the one you're talking about? 
Yeah, I think that one is... That one ended up being, like, my most successful video. Ever. Ever. Every, every, so, uh, Rachel's saying, I love your new profile picture, Eric. I see that it's new, but I can't see it because it's so small on my screen. Um, wow. Monica, super simple arts and crafts. Monica, how do you do this? It's, I, I, I need to, like, expand the chat area because a lot of comments are coming in a little bit too fast for me to read them all. I'm not going to crash, Shane. Cookie, Cookie's hit, uh, here. I almost said Cookie's Hill. Cookie is with us. Cookie, it's always nice to see you. Or, and hear from you. Um, Nancy, Nancy's been checking out Super Simple Arts and Crafts. See? See, Monica? Um, uh, Monica, she does... Uh, if you got kids around the house, or if you're into simple, super simple arts and crafts. Now, I am the type. I, I like to make things. I like to build things. I spend... You know, one of my dreams is to one day, like, have a workshop. I, I just like making things. Like, that sign people were asking where I got it, I made that. Um, something else I made. Like, when I see something I like and I, I need to have it, like, remember the friend's frame that was on the door? I made this. Because you can't, you can't buy a replica of this. I, I, I sculpted this, and uh, this is how I paid my way through college, by selling these on eBay. So, I like making things. So, Monica's got this channel where uh, she's showing you these really great tips of, you know, how to uh, make things on your own, and hopefully it encourages you to take what she's showing you and to make your own arts and crafts. Again, especially if you have kids around the house. <laughs> Angie's making fun of my video. Angie goes, I remember that. It was in the, the one with the, the, the hotel. It was, it was a cabin. It was a cabin. It was in a hotel. The bad lighting. Um, uh, UV Candles is here. Monica, yeah, I made that. Before I moved to California, I was going to... That that is an uh, almost an exact replica of a, one of the artworks that was found in Central Perk, in the show Friends. I'm not obsessed with the show Friends. It just so happens I just showed you two props from Friends. So I made, uh, f for the most part, to scale an exact replica of that painting, and uh, I just never got around to finishing the small details and selling it. And I just found it in the office with all my other signs and posters and things and so i've decided to put it back there it's better than looking at a wooden wall uh the frame uh, was sculpted out of clay and then you know from there it's all about mold making and then it's it's cast in ab resin and then hand painted um in my lifetime, I've probably sold 3,000 of them. If you go on eBay right now and you type in Friends Frame Monica, like Monica from Friends, more, more than likely one of my frames will be up for sale. Like somebody rather selling one that I've already sold them or somebody who's made a mold of the one I sculpted and is now just like making money off my sculpture. That's the reason why I had to stop, because people were buying it, replicating what I had already sculpted, and then selling it on their own. It's a crazy world. But yeah, I mean, that's, um, uh, my brother and I uh, had the, the great luxury to actually see the original prop. I don't know if you can see that, but this is to scale. I mean, I'm telling you, this sculpt was not easy. It's a, very, it's a little bit dusty right now. Uh, and the paint job, um, I put a lot of time, effort, and um, I didn't even want to fix 
the the faults. You know, there was a lot of it was in the show. It was actually a picture frame. Uh, the art department found it uh, when they, they they before they put it on the door. So they just took out the picture. They put it on the peephole in 1994, and it was there throughout the entire series of the show. But um, there was um, there's a lot of things. I it's not plaster. It's AB resin. I mean, this thing is can't break it. It's two parts resin, uh, well, well, two parts plastic. So what you do is you buy, I can't believe we're talking about this on a candle show. AB resin. This is A, right? This is part A, this is part B. You're gonna mix one to one ratio of these. And then what happens is when you mix that up, a chemical reaction occurs. I'm not sure what that chemical reaction is, uh, Angie. You probably know what it is, you're a chemical engineer. And it gets really hot, and then before you know it, you have incredibly hard resin plastic. I should work on Broadway. I wish I could work on Broadway. How fun would that be? I can't believe you have resin under your desk. I have to keep it there. Because it, it's sensitive, like you can't have it exposed to light and extreme temperatures. Uh, so I have to keep it away from the radiator and the AC in the summertime. Plus it serves kind of as a, I don't know, it's a small office. And... I didn't plan on showing it to you now. I don't have it. There's something else I made um, that I'm really happy with. I'll show you sometime. I really don't even know if I have one still. I would have to make one to show you. But um, uh, something else that I sold during those college years, early 20s, to, to pay the bills. So... Let's take a look at this candle. Before I do, I want to show you some of the stuff that's on the shelf or this table here. Look what I found for sale. I mean, maybe this is not saying like I'm using my time, prioritizing my time, right? But this is not fake. <laughs> this is a Yankee Candle Company security patch. And it says South Deerfield, Massachusetts on it. Now, I thought for a moment that, oh, someone just made this because they might have, like, a printer thing, some way of printing patches. But there's no way someone would have went to all that detail. I mean, that is South Deerfield. That is the village right there on, on, on the patch. Where did this come from and why? And how did I find it and why do I own it? Well, I own it, and it's in the archives now, in the archives. Um, yesterday I was talking about this fragrance. Uh, for St. Patrick's Day, the lineup is going to be Lucky Shamrock, all right? Returning favorite this year. This is the one I was excited about. I was looking for it last year. I decided not to do it. Uh, don't get this mixed up with, there's another one called, I can't remember the name, but this one is Luck of the Irish, right? Uh, really, really interesting candle. I cannot wait to give my full evaluation of this. I got to get to it soon because um, Rachel's got to go. Bye-bye, Rachel. Um, we're, we're really getting close to the wire. I have Meadow Showers is going to be a part of uh, my St. Patrick's Day Special? Can I call it a special? Where is it? Meadow Showers. I always love this one. It's very interesting fragrance. And I think this totally works for St. Patrick's Day. I did Emerald Isle last year. I see no reason to do it again. And I did Irish coffee last year, too. So you can always go back and check those out. This is the one I'm excited about. And excuse me if I've shown you like 15 times already. But some people don't watch 
all the time, and I'm excited about this. This is a late 1980s. These are candlesticks, but they're made by Yankee Candle. They were, indeed. Um, and they are scented. Um, how do I know? I can smell them. It's They're completely sealed, but there are a couple spaces where there's holes. Very powerful. So again, we're dealing, I'm gonna sacrifice uh, a, a relic, an artifact, a piece of history from Yankee Candle. I'm gonna open this up and do an Aroma Prison style analysis of this candle for St. Patrick's Day. That's what I have to work on this week because it's coming up really quick, really quick. And for Rachel, this was inspired by Rachel. She wanted to know whether or not I was going to post movie night. Because I said I was going to, you know, I had it in my collection. I burned it once or twice. I had fun with it. If someone really wants it, they can have it. I'll put it up on eBay, start at 99 cents. However, I was thinking one night, I definitely have to make a video on this. Like, a big popcorn video. That's all I have to say. Big popcorn video. Um, and uh, see if we can pair this with a buttery Chardonnay. See what, uh, what, what you know, uh, what, the differences between what kinds of popcorn. What kind of popcorn does this smell like? Does it smell like movie theater butter popcorn? Does it smell like the stuff you make in the microwave? Does it smell like the stuff you buy in the bag? Does it smell like true, authentic like kettle corn? we got to get to the bottom of this, people. Movie night. What does this candle smell like? Well, I'll let you know, but I need to... Uh, work on that video. Of course, we have the big blueberry video uh, coming up. Um, I'm going to do the entire spectrum, the history of blueberry from beginning to end of Yankee Candle's history, all of the blueberry scents, and do a side-by-side -side sniff, sniffing, and uh, share my thoughts, my opinions, my sensory evaluation. Uh, in order to do this, I needed to pick this up uh, two days ago. That's a returning favorite, the classic uh, blueberry fragrance by Yankee Candle. But something I do want to draw your attention to. I showed some of you folks last night at Deerfield. They have this incredibly, incredibly um, expensive laser printer that makes these beautiful photographs. They have the actual printer that was used down at the pop-up storefront in Soho in New York City. Um, the, the, the quality difference between this and some of the other ones I was making, like, so here's like one with the other printer. Man, that looks great. That looks great. And you guys probably can't tell the difference anyway because of the, the resolution of this video. But looking at this with a blind eye, this I mean, this is super high resolution. So if you are near South Deerfield, I'm gonna give them a little bit of promotion and uh, send you guys their way. I was gonna do one with Elsa, but I didn't get around to it. Postcards, postcards are coming. So if for Patreon members, and if you don't know what Patreon is, that's okay, but uh, Patreon.com slash the candle enthusiast. You'll find the, uh, the link in the description below. It's a way to uh, c contribute or uh, pledge uh, monthly to the show to keep the show on the road. Uh, those folks who uh, are supposed to be getting postcards, I finally found Deerfield. This one says Old Deerfield Country Store. I've been looking for Deerfield postcards for so long. And I finally got a pretty decent selection. So they're going out in the mail soon. And if you're curious about Patreon, I'm not going to be one of these people who are, I'm like trying to, uh, PBS, trying to sell it to you. But check it out. There's a lot of really cool tiers. Uh, uh, depending on how much you contribute, how much you pledge per month of uh what you what you, you know, things that you can get in the mail things you can take part in we have a candle enthusiast subscription box a subscription box i don't even get a subscription box what else do i got here i have i recently sold some old matchbooks from yankee candle company uh from like the mid 90s i found ones that are even older cookie hill with the $20 super chat. Cookie, thank you so much. 
Cookie and I, we go back a long way. Uh, uh, thank you so much for not, not only joining in on the live, uh, but for contributing $20. You, she, Cookie's got the biggest heart. Uh, you gotta get to know, I wish, I wish you can, you gotta come by more often. Cookie, we, we need to talk. We need to, maybe we gotta spend more time in the comment section and, uh, chit chat, catch up. Cause I don't think we have had a good conversation since like Christmas, but thank you so much, Cookie, from the bottom of my heart. Um, older, older, uh, matchbooks from, uh, Deerfield, Yankee Candle Company. You're probably saying, who cares? Who cares? What do you mean, who cares? This is Yankee Candle history. Yankee Candle history. I got four of them. So two of them are going in the archives. Two of them are going on, you guessed it, you guessed it, the Candle Enthusiast eBay page. 100% of the proceeds go back into the show. And you guys have been asking me for, for this for a long time. And I kept putting it off because there essentially is, at this scale of my popularity, there's no way to make money on merchandise. I mean, are you guys really gonna walk around with a t-shirt with my face on it? No, you're not. I guarantee you're not, you're not gonna do it. So I have to think of very creative ways to uh, come up with merchandise. This is not a way for me to make money for the show. I wouldn't be making money for myself anyway, but it's not going to make money for the show, but it at least gives the opportunity for you folks who want merchandise to get it. So I'm going to be making a series of limited edition items. I'm not going to make hundreds. I'm not going to make 50. I'm not going to probably even make 20. I'm going to do like five or 10 items and that's it. When they're sold out, I'll release new ones. And coming up soon, I don't want to get super close because this is not a, is not a great example, but we have uh, our Mary Tyler Moore inspired The Candle Enthusiast mug. I'll let you guys know when this is uh, available for pre-order. Uh, it's really, good, really going to be a first come, first, uh, first come, first serve basis. Uh, I'll probably just post a link on the, the, the Facebook page one night that gives you another incentive to join the facebook fan page uh somebody link up that link for the facebook fan group um if you don't mind thank you i don't mean to be throwing out demands but uh yeah i'm probably gonna make five of these uh if you don't know what i'm talking about the mary tyler moore you know the mary tyler moore uh show the opening remember you're gonna make it after all right uh the opening where mary tyler moore's name was spelled out several times well this says the candle enthusiast the reason why this one i don't want to get too close and share it because it doesn't look good something happened to the jpeg that they received and it i just it doesn't meet my standards so i'm gonna fix it uh black inside i'm gonna maybe hand number it and sign it on the bottom I might make five, I might make 10, I haven't decided yet, but keep your eyes open for that. When they're sold out, I will make more. So I'm following through with my promise to make merchandise. Um, you know, maybe t-shirts, maybe tote bags, maybe those will be things uh, to come in the near future. I just wanna keep them fun and I wanna keep my face off them. You know, I just don't want, I just don't want my face on. How is our candle doing? Whew. I need a sip of coffee. Hold on. All right. All right, it's done nothing. All right, people. I was afraid of this, but this is what it's gonna come down to. Remember, I do not recommend this. I do not recommend this to anybody unless you really have a lot of practice. And this is entertainment after all. So, I want to make sure that you guys are receiving some form of entertainment. Last time I did this, the candle didn't fully pull out, and that's no fun. All right. So, as you can see, I'm going to tilt the camera. Yeah, I mean, not much is happening here, but we're going to change this gonna change this kids 
this is not a joke. Don't do this. Don't do this. Uh, I highly recommend you do not use a blowtorch. I'm using this for entertainment purposes. But if you have one of those heat guns for like creme brulee in the kitchen, that's going to be your best option. The last thing you want to do is get this glass too hot. It shatters on you and, well, not only do you have a mess, but you could severely, severely burn yourself. So make sure you're wearing gloves, uh, goggles, if you're an adult. I don't have any of those things on me right now except for a fire extinguisher that I'm not even quite sure if it works. But I'm going to, what I'm going to try to do is fix the tunneling problem. And it's not going to be what you think it is. It's not going to be me. It, that, no, that won't work. It's simply uh, heating the glass from the outside just to get it warm enough so that we can get that paraffin to start incorporating itself with the already melted paraffin. And you got to be careful not to hit the label. If you hit the label, you're going to melt the label. I don't want to hit the label. Is there a chance this could break and shatter on a live YouTube stream? Absolutely. Would I be surprised? No. I am going to go inside. good sense of how hot that glass is. All right, now I'm gonna go back outside the glass. This is looking actually really good, seriously. You guys probably sang differently. Um, now keep in mind, this glass is hot now. It's hot. So that paraffin is going to continue to melt, even without the flame on it. And never that rattling problem, there's no rattling problem anymore because now all of that wax that has melted from the top is trickling down the sides of the glass, adhering the wax chunk back to the apothecary jar. I can see it. I can see it dripping down. And it's making some streaks. Now it's that part I don't like. So I gotta be careful with that. All right, so it's so um, tunneled. There's about still an inch on one side. But I'm going to show you the difference of what we're looking at right now compared to what we just had. Can you guys see that? I mean, look at the difference. So with a little bit of patience... Now, this glass is still very hot, so that, that wax is gonna to continue to melt. I really shouldn't be turning it like this because what that's gonna do is uh, make the wax stick to the glass. All right. And does it light? It doesn't because the wick, so I'm gonna roll that around and let the, some of that wax drip down into the crevice. There we go. Come on, wick. There it goes. 
the wick is just very, very short. Very short on me. But look at this. We have some really... Uh, that I would have to fix. There's a problem right there aesthetically that I don't like. But for the rest of it, I really like the texture because a lot of the pigment... You see how the pigment is much darker on the bottom here? And for whatever reason, uh, the wax is really, really light up here. Um, I'm not even going to try to guess how that happens. Um, I'm just guessing through age, um, the pigment seeps through the paraffin in some form. Um, so what's happening as it's melting and coming down through the sides, you're getting this tie-dyed effect, which I think is pretty cool. And the one thing I haven't mentioned to you guys right now is how awesome this smells. How amazing. And there's something written on the back of this jar. Let me read it. <clears throat> uh, keep wick trim to one fourth inch at all times to prevent smoking or blackening of container. Burn the candle at least three hours at a time to consume all of the wax, leaving a reusable jar. Do not allow matches or any flammable objects to drop into the jar. Avoid contact. Avoid contact of the flame with the glass. Um, okay. Um... When wax liquefies, be sure the wick base remains centered. Place burning... There's a lot of instructions on this candle. Place burning candles on a safe, heat-resistant surface as the jar can become hot. Keep candles away from draft and excessive vibrations. Excessive vibrations. What's going on with this? these instructions? Extinguish flame before placing on lid. Never leave burning candles unattended. Yankee Candle Company, South Deerfield, Massachusetts. All right. I'm liking it. I'm liking it, folks. By the time I'm done with this, this is going to be fully pulled out. And this candle is going to be good to go. It's going to be it's going to be like brand new. It's not going to look the prettiest, but it's going to burn and it's going to have a full life of aromatics to exude. Let me do one of these inside of this tube. Now, Angie, I'm glad you're here. If you don't know, Angie is a chemical engineer, and uh, sometimes I say things that. I really can't back up with science, so please correct me if I'm wrong on anything. But inside of this glass tumbler is oxygen, right? What's coming out of this candle would be CO2, right? CO2 is lighter than oxygen, so if I hold this over the candle like this, what should happen is the CO2 should rush to the top, displacing the oxygen from the cylinder, right? Right? I dropped out of chemistry in high school. I actually didn't even go to the first day. They're like, do you really want to be here or do you want to go take an art class? I'm like, I'll, I'll take an art class. And that's exactly what happened. But by holding this up, this should fill up with the aromatics of the candle. And again, if you can't, you can't see it, but I have the candle set just right underneath this tumbler. And after a few moments, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip this thing around and I'm going to sift. I'm going to sniff. I'm going to sniff. It will, she, she says, it will consume the CO2 in the cylinder. Okay. I mean, guys, I'm not going to lie. I smell a little bit of paraffin. I mean, you smell like, it smells a little bit like melted wax. This candle's got life. This smells really good. I'm not sure when Country Heather, again, that's the name of the, the fragrance, Country Heather. I don't know when this was retired. But just reading a little bit on Heather today before this show and Spooky Villages, how we doing? Uh, just reading a little bit on Heather and um, 
you know, just taking a good look at pictures and some of the uh, 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 symbolic meanings uh, behind uh, the flowering plant. Uh, it really got me interesting, uh, interested in this candle again. So it's 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 always what I say. It's the con having context behind the candle will really help you enjoy the candle itself more. So. Um, you know, going into this, I Heather. I know the movie Heather's. That's about it. Um, and um, but uh, doing some research has given me kind of a new appreciation for this fragrance. And it really, uh, from what I've read about the aroma of Heather. Now, I mean, you have to generalize a little bit. I mean, it it seems quite quite accurate to me uh definitely very of the earth smelling you know uh not so big pungent floral pollen ah uh, but more of like soft petals does kind of have this um ten dollar super chat thank you so much travis 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 i got your name right right travis thank you so much high five really guys means a lot I can't, I can't, I can't, can't say it enough. I'm going to keep saying it, but I can't say it enough. Thank you so much. Um, and, um, yeah, um, if you like lilacs, I'm not saying it smells like lilacs, but if you like, like, uh, uh white musk, uh, powdery perfumes, um, uh, soft floral bathroom aromatics, this is a candle... <laughs> that you might want to seek on, um, I don't know, Craigslist uh, for hours and hours and hours, days and days and days, and see if you can get your hand on it, because the Yankee Candle doesn't make it anymore. But uh, since I never burned one, since I never had one, I had to get this. I had to see what it smelled like. I will fix this candle completely. We're about halfway there. What I did already with the blowtorch, I will do that again until we have a full wax pool on top. If the, the wick does get completely consumed by melted wax, I will sacrifice some of the wax. I'll dump it out just so the, the wick sticks out enough. And then, um, like I said, all of that that rattling is, I mean, I can't shake it now. There's, there's wax in here, but that will be gone because it's dripped down the sides. Um, and because I love doing this show, filming this show, producing this show, making this, uh, this project called The Candle Enthusiast, taking it to new places, uh, seeing it through, cradling it, making sure that we're constantly growing and evolving and tackling new things, uh, I want to make sure that you guys are, know that I'm not buying stuff like this, expensive stuff, because this wasn't, this wasn't necessarily inexpensive this candle, even as, you know, the shape it's in, it wasn't cheap. I'm not going to keep this. I'm going to fix it, and I'm going to eventually put it up on the eBay page starting at 99 cents. Again, uh, I want to give, I want to give everyone a fair chance to get it at a good price. Do I want it to go for a good amount of money? Of course. Why? Because I want us to see us do more things. But there's always that chance that people forget when the, the end of the auction and you walk away with a great candle for eight bucks. So I'll let you know when this candle's fixed, when it's up on eBay. Um, before we leave today, I might give that another blowtorch thing. Um, thing, what am I trying to say? Uh, try to fix it. There was something else I wanted to show. Yes. So Kringle Candle fans, listen up. Um, in 2014, if you already do not know, 2014, there was a Halloween collection produced by Kringle Candle. It did terrible. They did not sell. They sold so poorly, in fact, that they took them all off the shelves and they put them on clearance. For five dollars and fifty cents, for the big, si biggest size jar they had. After that year, they disappeared completely. I shared my enthusiasm for uh, Witch's Cauldron. Um, 
I reviewed this in uh, Salem, Massachusetts, in a cemetery. You guys know the story. I got locked in. This is my all-time favorite Halloween candle. Uh, and it's not just because it's so scarce and so rare, um, but it really is, to me, it encapsulates so many wonderful, whimsical ideas of Halloween. It's dark, it's gothic, but it's also fun and, and actually like candy-esque too. So it, it's, it's many sides of Halloween. However, uh, my passion for that candle set me on a journey. And you, you all know this, but I needed to hunt down the under, other candles. Do I not have Fright Night? Fright Night was another one that was a part of the collection. Big, big, fruity floral candle. Um, probably the least intense out of all of these, but probably the one that would be enjoyed by the masses the most. Believe it or not, the hardest one to find was this one right here, Wolf's Bane. This one is a monster. It's a monster. It's herbal, it's floral, and it's, when I say monster, I mean it's musk to the nth degree. This thing you could smell across the room. There's no reason to even light it, right? You know I've been having, been selling these on eBay. It's been raising money for the show. It's been doing really well. I also found them in the cups, the daylight. So this way you can't, you don't have to like buy the whole jar. If you want to just see what they smell like or give them, uh, you know, buy a little sample. I'm trying to try to keep more and more up uh, on eBay so you can buy them. The thing is, I don't have many of them. However, some collectors reached out to me and said, look, there was a medium-sized jar, a part of this collection. There was the daylight. This was the largest format they had. But there was also another size. I had no intention of trying to hunt those down. I mean, they were, you know, I was like, why? I, I, have, I have the jar. I have the big jar. But several, several people inspired me to find them, and um, it took a little bit of work, a little bit of effort. I found them, and trust me, I do not have a lot of them. And the reason why I'm mentioning it now is because on eBay, it's kind of hard to tell the difference. Uh, these are five-ounce glass tumblers of the Kringle fragrances. This purple glass with Fright Night... Let me put this down. Um, aluminum lid, again, with another sticker on top. We have the bright white paraffin, not discolored in any way. In fact, I can promise you this. These have never been on display. They have been packed away since the day they were manufactured, poured, they were boxed. The boxes I purchased them in are Kringle Candle boxes. Uh, I could show you the, the, the sticker on the box says, Witch's Cauldron, Fright Night, Wolf's Pain. They're from Kringle's Warehouse. So they've never been on sale. Uh, this is the medium-sized jar of Witch's Cauldron. Again, my favorite Halloween candle. And when I saw this up close and I saw that frosted, frosted black glass i'm like wow you know what maybe this was worth the effort to try to find it um again this is not all that smaller than the i mean the large jar is 8.5 ounces and it's got the classic kringle jar with the two lips but this has this you know frosted black glass tumbler again with the witch's cauldron and the paraffin wax inside and last but not least same thing frosted black tumbler wolf spain that monster i can smell it from here Phil, uh uh brett philly candleman's in the house uh and then on top of that aluminum lid again the other sticker um there is nothing wrong with these. These are not defective. In no way did I get these from like a, like a, like a Yankee Candle outlet equivalent. These are, these were, were these were sealed in their boxes because they were never sold. 
Uh, they, I don't know how long they stayed at Kringle Candle, but I'm looking at them right here. These are Kringle Candle boxes with the actual stickers on them. So the reason why I bring this up is because I do not have a lot of these. And I really, really would not like to have to go through the process to uh, acquire more uh, of, of these medium sized dresses. So if you are a collector, I have about a dozen each of these medium ones. Uh, I'll always have, uh, I'm going to try to slow down the sales of these because I want to have these jars ready for Halloween. And the daylights, I'm all out of uh, Black Cauldron, or Black Cauldron, uh, Wolfsbane, uh, but I have a few Witch's Cauldron and I have um, Fright Night and I have Kringle Corn in the daylight. Kringle Corn was the fourth of the collection. That one was a hot seller. That one did sell a lot, so there, I don't have, I don't even have it in my collection. So uh, make sure you check those out. Again, every single penny, every penny goes back into the show, so we can travel. We gotta get back to Salem, people. I lost a lot of our footage. We stayed at the Hawthorne Inn, we visited Liz at Witch City Wicks, and we lost that footage. I lost that footage, it's my fault, but we gotta go back now. And I want to make sure that I'm delivering on my promises. And all this money is helping fund the show, oiling all the gears, keeping it going, keeping it afloat. Uh, so excuse me if this does sound like self-promotion at all. But truly, it's just the only way I know how to keep the candle enthusiast alive. I'm doing the best I can here. You know, it's a one-man show. Uh, but you guys have been there with me for every step and uh, have supported me. So, I mean, I, I, without you guys, I would have been done a year ago. Thank you very much. Uh, so with that said, um, let's give this one more blowtorch and then we'll try to wrap things up a little bit. And there's still something on Patreon that nobody has asked about yet. Patreon.com slash the candle enthusiast. There's one tier that nobody has inquired about. And I thought it would be the coolest thing. And apparently it's not. So, uh, but check it out if you're intrigued. Um, it, I believe it's the $15 tier. All right, here we go. See, unfortunately, by doing this, so I'm burning a lot of the fragrance oil, but it really is the only way to fix it. I hope you guys can see that. Can you see how it's fixing itself right there? How that white wax is dripping down? See, these don't have uh, sticky labels. These, um, I don't know what kind of printing you would call that. They're painted. But I can't, oh, oh, see, look. It's fixing, it's fixing itself. Right there. I know it's hard to see, people. Let me bring you a little bit closer. I can't. And weirdly, it's giving off whatever that was, what was in it. It's giving off a weird scent. Hopefully that will go away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some, some guys like to collect sports cars. Some guys like to collect you know I don't know what do guys buy like footballs baseballs I like to collect candles I take candles very seriously guys there's a reason why the channel is called the candle enthusiast 
Where did the name The Candle Enthusiast come from? I'll let you know. Uh, at work, um, when I lived in Napa Valley, uh, I was working at this, I won't say where, but it was really, really, really nice winery that I love with all my heart. However, the co-workers were, well, always had a little fun with me because they knew I liked candles. So my nickname quickly became the Candle Enthusiast, as in the Wine Enthusiast magazine. So one day as a joke, I told them, look, you know, one day I'm going to pack up my bags and leave Napa Valley. I'm going to become the candle enthusiast. Watch, I'm going to change the, the candle world. That's a big statement, but that's what I told them, right? Two years later, I have what? 2,300 people as an audience watching me talk about candles. Uh, something that I thought was absolutely positively ridiculous, but I enjoyed it. I, I, I you know, I, I wasn't self-conscious of my own personal hobby, but knowing that there's people out there who would like to watch my passion, watch my, uh, join along with my enthusiasm and, and, and tune in on every Sunday to watch a live where we just fixed a 35 year old candle that's completely pulled out people that's completely pulled out i'm gonna let that dry and this candle that was ready for the trash for most people is now ready to have a whole life of its own i'm gonna let that solidify cap it clean it all up and someone's gonna have this in their home uh, real soon. Hopefully it's a good home, home uh, that uh, someone will take care of it, whether they burn it or leave it on display. It looks great. It's fully pulled out. And the wick, the wick is still pointing out from the center. Um, do you guys see it? You guys saw it, right? Let's do it one more time. One more time. Just for those people who weren't with us the whole time, who's just skimmed the video, I might even go over this one more time with the blowtorch. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that's what I do. That's what I do. And uh, speaking of this, I am going to hold uh, my promise and I'm going to take um, uh, a Yankee candle one of these days and I'm going to throw it, break it, and we're going to fix it. I'm going to make a whole video of how to fix uh, a Yankee candle. I'm not saying I'm some genius that knows how to do it perfectly, but I've given a lot of trial and error and all of my broken and fixed candles burned great. So I can't wait to share that with you. I'm going to take any last questions before we get to 100 minutes and then I'm going to let you guys go uh, enjoy your, uh, your Sunday and I'm going to get back to editing because I have a lot of footage from the past two days. I can't wait for you guys to see it. So I want to get it done quick. And once, once more, I do want to thank everyone for, uh, everyone who, 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 well, first of all, everyone for joining today, but the, the super chats, that's, that, that's huge. Uh, that I, I wish I could say it in a different way, but it means a lot to me. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Da, 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 da. How was Kringle? Kringle was great. Kringle was a lot of fun. I didn't film um, Brett because I talked to um, talked to um, the marketing director there. I, I, I had been introduced to her a few times a uh, uh, long time ago, but back when this channel was was really, really, really small. I mean, really small. And um, so I talked to her about going back at a later date and actually filming like something a little bit more nice instead of me just vlogging like that and she seemed into it so I'm gonna correspond with her and see when and how we can pull this off maybe we can even get Mike Kittredge 
just give us a little interview. He's not there a lot, uh, but if we can catch him, when I say Mike Kittredge, I mean the third. And, uh, and Brett, one, and two. Uh, these uh, were, will be going out to you very soon, I promised. Uh, Brett, to pick something up for him. Hope you enjoy those. Anytime, anytime. That's what I'm here for. Any way it can help. Am I going to watch the Oscars? I am not going to watch the Oscars. It's so sad to say that because... Uh, I, you know, there, there, there's years where I see every single movie, and then there's years I don't see anything. And for the past two years, I, I've, I've gone to the movies maybe twice. Uh, I've seen Moana. I've seen the live-action Beauty and the Beast. I love Disney. Um, I just don't get to the movies very often. And I feel like... It always stresses me out watching the Oscars, you know, because you have to remember, I worked in the film industry for a while. That was my dream, you know, when I was younger to to be that, you know, in that group of people in Hollywood, you know, rubbing elbows. So it stresses me out to watch that stuff, especially knowing how how that industry is. Um, it's a rough industry to work for. Um, and yeah, I mean, Eric, I'll quickly address that. Like, I don't, um, I won't, I won't even mention it, but you guys read Eric's comment. I just don't want anything to do with anything of that. Um, so... But anyway, um, what was your favorite movie of 2017? There's a good question of the day. This video is not going to be posted for a while still. And I see all the bidding happening on eBay. Don't think that I don't see it. I'm being notified on my phone. And thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, but when this video is posted, make sure... Uh, you come back, let me know what your favorite movie is. Or if you want me to watch a movie, have any suggestions. If you have any questions regarding what we did today. Oh my god, I wish this was completely solidified because it's a perfectly flat surface now. I don't know why this makes me so happy, but it makes me incredibly happy. Um, but come back, leave a message, say hello, and uh, I'm going to be seeing you guys real soon. We got lots coming up this week. I still am waiting to watch the new Star Wars. I didn't, I wanted to see it in theater and I kept postponing it because I didn't want to, you know, a lot of people in the audience and I postponed it so much that now it's almost, you know, on iTunes. So I'm just going to watch it in the comfort of my own home uh, when it's released. And I've managed to dodge any spoilers uh, at this point, so don't ruin it for me. Um, everyone, thank you for joining. Thank you for always being in my corner. I want, I want to stress that right now. Always being in my corner, supporting me, understanding me, understanding who I am and what I'm trying to do as an artist. It might not seem like what I do on a day-to-day, -day, these videos, like it's an artistic effort, but I assure you, it, it is for me. I, I, this is my way of... Um, being able to express myself in an artistic manner and I hope to see this channel grow to something much much bigger one day and we'll look back and say remember when so with that thank you very much I'll see you guys soon but until then be good will you and uh, happy Sunday